Today I'm going to make another paper clay bowl. And the reason is, I love the look of how these finish at the end. They're so much more aesthetically pleasing than just having a normal bowl like this with something in. And I want it to put some potpourri in. They're really easy. All I'm going to be using is my paper clay recipe. I've already got some mixed up that I made probably a couple of months ago, and that's fine. And now what I'm going to do is prepare the bowl so it comes off really easily. I'm using some cling film or plastic wrap, and all I'm doing is popping that around the bowl. Does everybody else have a problem with it? I get it. Honestly, I spend more time fighting with the plastic wrap than I do putting it on things. And it never cuts. Look, I've got that silver thing on there and it never cuts. What is it with me? And look at that. Oh, mess. Now, I don't mind the little creases in it at all. That is absolutely fine. I am going to stick that into the inside of the bowl. Going all the way round. Make sure it doesn't loosen off or come off that bowl. If you don't want to use plastic wrap, you don't have to but it does make it a little bit harder to get it off the bowl once it's fully dry. Eh, that should be enough. That's nicely covered on there. And then when all we need to do is take our paper clay like this and push it onto the bowl. Now this is going to give me a little bit of a dip in the middle of the bowl because there's a little dip here, but I don't mind that. I like it like that. And I don't want this to be completely smooth. What I am going to do is do a different type of finish on this that I've not shown on video before. So I'm going to go through how to make that. Now, I try and get it about equal thickness all the way round. And then once I've done that, I'll show you how I finish it off before I set it to dry. And I'll also show you how I get it to dry in a quarter of the time that it would normally take. So I've got that completely covered now and it's at the depth or thickness that I hope is perfect. Now what I'm going to do before I do anything else is brush over a layer of the white glue that I use in the paper clay recipe. If you want the paper clay recipe, it's free to download amongst so many other different free things on my website. So please take a look. It doesn't cost you anything. There's lots of things, shapes, pictures, images, recipes, all that sort of thing that could be useful for you. And what this will do is this will just smooth out any cracks or anything like that, as you can see. But it won't actually smooth out the project too much because I want it to look quite rustic. If I wanted to smooth it out, I could. All I'd need to do is go over it with a spatula dipped into some water and smooth it out like that. And that is all I'm going to do for the base because I do want that to be smoothish. And then around the edges like that. So that smoothed that out really well now, but I don't want the rest of it to be smoothed out. So going over it with this glue will really help it have that lovely rustic feel to it. And now you can set this aside for two or three days to dry. I've propped it up on a pot, as I said, and that allows the air to get all the way around it. Or you can do what I'm going to do, and I'm going to speed the drying up of this by popping it into my resin as curing box. It's made for tumblers, but I use it for virtually everything now. I absolutely love it. It's a great big space and it cures things up really well. If I've got a discount code for it, I'll pop it in the description below, but you see me use it so often. It's awesome. So I'll pop it in there, turn it on, and then I can leave it now for a couple of hours and it'll really start to dry that out. If you haven't got one of these, then you could pop it in front of a fan, in front of somewhere warm, or you can try sticking it in the oven on a low temperature. Well, this has been drying now for about five hours and you can really see that box makes a great difference. But what I need to do now is to take it off this bowl to allow it to fully dry in the inside. And it should keep its shape now. All I need to do is take it off really gently and it should pop out quite easily. Yeah, there we go. Because Because as you can see, it isn't dry. Can you see the steam coming off this where it's been sitting in the heater and it's got warm? So now that steam will evaporate off there and allow that to dry rather than being trapped in there. And I'll let that finish off drying now for the next hour or so. And then we can check on it. You can actually see it starting to dry out as that steam is starting to release. Look. Well, now it's 90% dry. What I want to do is trim this edge up because if I don't trim the edge up then it's going to have quite a rough edge to it and all I'm going to do is go around it with my scissors 
and keep it into, you can see how hard it is. But I don't want it to be a perfect shape. I want it to still look quite rustic. But where I've hung it over and things like that, that's where I want it to go. It won't take long to trim it up into the shape that I want. Then what I'll do is I'll let it dry overnight again before I finish off decorating it. Look how lovely and dry and hard this has gone. So it's time to paint it. But before I give it a paint, what I'm going to do is go around just the edge. I'm not going to rub anywhere else down and just make a nice smooth edge. And you'll see why in a little while, because I've got something that I really want to use to finish this bowl off. So that'll be enough with the course of sandpaper. And now I'm going to go around it with a high grit just to really smooth it off and soften it off. I love making these bowls. They're so much fun and they always look really nice, I think. So let's get rid of that. Now what I'm going to do is paint the inside red. I like the red of an inside. I don't know why. And I'll give it a couple of coats of this red all the way around, including that rim before I go and finish off that rim itself. The outside I'm going to paint white and I'll give it two coats of each before I put the final decorations on. Covers lovely. Before I can do the final two stages for this, what I need to do is varnish it. And I was looking over some of my older videos where I've made bowls and pots and things and I seem to have a trend that I like to put red on the inside. It seems to be coming my signature. I don't know if you've noticed. Check out some of my previous videos and you'll be able to see. So I'm giving this a coat of varnish and I'm using a gloss varnish and I will give it two coats. I'll let this dry thoroughly and then give it two coats before I do anything else. And the next two stages after this are really going to make this bowl stand out. Quick thank you to everyone that got me a coffee last month. Thank you so much. I can't tell you how much your support needs to me. One of my cameras went wrong so I've got to get that replaced and also I'm moving soon and it means I won't have a studio and I'll have to build a new studio. So thank you so so much. All helps. I can't tell you. So I'm going to varnish the outside as well and then I'm going to do the final finishing touches. Before I put the very final decoration on, what I'm going to do is add some gold leaf around the rim and to do that I'm using the gold leaf glue that I know you'll have seen me use loads of times before. You just pop it on, let it go clear. Once it's gone clear, then you can add your gold leaf to it. Well, that glue is lovely and dry now, and it's ready to have the leaf put on it. And all I'm going to do is pick the leaf up, put it on the edge where I want it, push it down with my finger. Now, I'm no expert at leafing, but I do love it. I think it lifts up everything that you put it on. Make sure it's on there firm, and then you can remove what you don't use. I will go around the whole rim of this bowl doing that. Well, this is all ready now to have its final decoration put on, and I've got some of these butterfly tattoos. I love these tattoos. Always remember, whenever you're putting a tattoo on, though, to take off that plastic, <laughs> because if you don't, you'll regret it. And to put them up the right way, because obviously I've got my bowl here, and it's upside down. So I'm going to go round, pop that on, take a sponge and then wet it slightly and leave it for a few seconds or for a couple of minutes to get onto there. And I'm going all the way around the whole thing. And that's why it's important to varnish it first because you want to put it onto a nice varnished finish and they tell you when they're kind of ready to move off and that one's not quite ready. Put that on there, get that nice and damp. Then once they're ready to come off, you can just pull them off and then they finish like that. So I'm going to finish this off and then I'm going to show you how I can protect it and show you what it looks like finished. While my tattoos are all dry now, all I need to do is pop a layer of varnish over the tattoos and over the gold leaf as well. And that will seal them in, stop them scratching off and also stop them peeling off at any time. I'll do that on the front and on the inside of the bowl, going all the way around. Let that dry up and then we can look at it completely finished. Well, it's all done now. It's all protected and I am absolutely overwhelmed at how well it came out. I hope you've enjoyed it. I mean, you don't have to do these colours at all. You can do whatever colours you like and whatever size bowl you like. As, as you know, I made a much bigger one than this. It holds potpourri really nicely and it would hold many other things really nicely. And it is very robust. I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as 
I've enjoyed making it. Boop that like button, hit that subscribe button, and check out the video that I've got coming up next. And that is also on how to make a much larger bowl. And if you want the recipe, the recipe is free to download for the paper clay on my website, which is also in the description below. Take care, enjoy your crafting. Bye.